Hey everyone, we're now moving into the next eroder here, which is water. I know we talked about it with groundwater and rivers, but we want to talk about it in terms of shorelines now. Well, there are these things called waves. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of them. And basically waves are caused by wind or earthquakes. Um, they can be caused by rock falls, but most of the time it's wind. As the shoreline kind of rises up and the waves run into the shoreline, they start to build higher and higher waves and so you get that crashing on the beach. So we've got a lot of fast moving water here. So fast moving water carrying lots of particles. How are we gonna break down the shoreline? The basic idea here is abrasion. As, a, as the water moves towards what we call the headlands, those are the parts of the lands that are sticking out into the water, the waves carry pieces of other rocks and smash them against the shore, as well as the wave energy itself just smashing against the shore. And when they do that, it starts to break pieces of the headlands off. And so this could show you that as those uh, headlands are getting hit from all sides, you could have water coming in and hitting the edges of those headlands and kind of carving out the insides and creating things like these stacks and arches. So what you see here in this picture is a sea cave, a sea arch, and a sea stack. Basically in that order it starts to wear out a little bit, making a sea cave, very dangerous by the way. Uh, sea arches then form when the cave cuts all the way through the rock and when that arch collapses you get a sea stack. Of course that energy has to carry the sediment somewhere. And so when it does that, we end up getting some deposition, which makes one of these get. Beaches are where the eroded material gets dropped off as the water slows down, not moving as fast as it was out there, kind of in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, you can actually see the headland in the distance here. So that material is getting carried from there onto the beach. And it's actually trying to flatten out the shoreline. For us, waves move. They move in a current, so they move in a direction up or down the coast depending on circulation patterns in the water and in this case if the water comes at angles it can cause material to move parallel and down the shoreline so you can see that as the waves come like this they hit the beach and push sand from the top of the page more towards the bottom of the page. This can cause a couple of phenomenons actually. One thing is that as you go further and further south down the coastline, beaches will get larger and larger and thicker and thicker as a general rule, as long as people haven't messed with the system. And There's south, basically here in the US, not all over the place. So. Right, it's always in the direction of the water. On the west coast, I think it's northern. So what we have in a rip current is when two longshore currents kind of meet and there's nowhere really for the water to go but out. The weathering agent here is abrasion. Abrasion with little pieces of materials hitting the rocks. Uh, erosion because the water's moving so fast and hitting the rocks and breaking them down into smaller and smaller pieces. So now we want to talk about the materials being dropped off. And there are a lot of different things that can cause ocean water to slow down. Um, but whatever causes it to slow down. There are a lot of different depositional features that are formed. Things like spits or bay mouth bars, tombolos, barrier islands, lagoons, they're all kind of in this image here. Let's talk about a few. Okay, well in this image we definitely have some headlands. As the water moves around those headlands, it slows down. And you can see around every single headland there is some kind of depositional features. Uh, bay barriers, um, which create lagoons and a tombolo is caused by the water slowing down around the little island that has been separated from the headland and as the water slows down um, in between those two pieces it builds up and causes this connection called a tombolo. Okay so those are the natural features that we see but humans can alter these shorelines by doing kind of our own shoreline catching or trying to get sand deposited on our beach. And a couple way we can do that is through sea walls, through things called groins and jetties. All these things are man-made ways of slowing down the water. In the case of sea walls, as the water runs by, the walls slow down the water and you can see the sand building up between the mainland and those sea walls. So as the water slows down, it drops off the material, kind of takes out all that energy from the waves and you get the sand in the deposit behind it. A groin is more uh, like a seawall except it goes perpendicular to the longshore currents so that when water hits those walls sand gets dropped off on 
the far side of the groin, but since the water then is moving fast on the inside of that groin, you actually get erosion as well. Here's a really good example of groins. You can see in the left-hand picture that there are some man-made walls jutting out from the mainland. Well, those are slowing down the water. As the water hits them, they begin to drop sediment. The same area after the use of the groins obviously has built up a beach. And a jetty is pretty much the same thing. It's just walls put out. So in this case, it's trying to connect a bay or a lagoon to the ocean. You can see on the left side of the picture, a lot of deposition. And on the right side of the picture, there's a lot of erosion. So I can tell you right now that the water is moving from left to right. Groins, sea walls, those are jetties are all things we can use to protect our shorelines. But if we're in a in the U.S. in a northern beach and all our sand is moving towards the south, one of the uh, more expensive options is to just bring in your own sand. Yeah, dredging's a way to create erosion and deposition unnaturally. So basically, what they do is they take a big mixing device and a vacuum, drag it along the sea bottom and that picks up sand and they can literally blow it wherever they want to. And a big place where this is happening, a very artistic place this is happening, is in the islands of Dubai. Yeah, they have that crazy map of the world thing where they have it all built up like this. So to recap here, shoreline weathering is caused from abrasion, the mixing of material inside the water, hitting and kind of sandblasting the rock away. The fast moving water takes the sand and moves it from one place to another. And when the water slows down eventually, you can have a drop off in depositional features like spits and bars and groins and jetties. Sounds good. Sounds good. We'll talk next time.